Hello everybody and welcome to this year's Christmas special. Dennis has just decided to start putting Christmas lights up at, well it's gone 10pm. Um, I was about to go to sleep, as you can see we're upstairs in the guest room. Um, but no, he has decided to lay them all out on the ground and switch them on to test them. The one over there is not actually his. Um, well, the giveaway is because it's up, he can't actually put them up on his own. It belongs to the village. I think there might be some more, I'm not too sure. But um, yeah, that, that one was put up yesterday. So we are going to assist for a bit. Um, it is, it's 18 minutes past 10, so I can spare a bit of time, but it would be good to go to sleep as well. So I'm gonna head downstairs, we'll take a look. I can't actually move. Uh, for Christmas lights. Wow. So he does seem to be quite a festive character, which I'm surprised about. I didn't think he'd be interested at all in putting all these uh, lovely Christmas lights up. So, um, yes, he can't do them on his own. We're going to help. Um, he would like some advice on where to put them. You would have thought he would know where to put them on his own pub. But I would say something like this nice one here. We'll put on the, the fronts just there. Just across the middle of the building. Um, the Bauble looks nice for the side, somewhere up here. As for these ones, they belong on a post. We could put them on the inside of this post, even though technically, I don't know, yeah, I suppose it does technically belong to uh, somebody else. But um, yes, we could put it on here, I suppose. And we do have some other stuff to go on other various areas. So I'm gonna just, um, yeah, switch them off first of all and put them up where I think they're going to be appropriately suited. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to see you in a few minutes, and hopefully by the end of this, it's going to be finished. I don't know if I can get through them all. Um, there's quite a few, but uh, I'll try my best, and I will uh, update you, hopefully within the hour. It better not take too long. Whew, that was a tough job, and Dennis wasn't exactly helpful. So I pretty much did it on my own. He had to help pass a few things up, Oh, there is a car. They've seen it before everybody else, but we have just, the two of us, done this. And I thought it was quite amusing because when I saw this one here, I immediately thought, hmm, that suits Dennis because it looks like his moustache. And it actually does, with stars coming out of it, so that's kind of weird. But, um, yes, his pub now has a moustache. There's even one on the roof. That one was tough to put up. So, yeah, there we go. <laughs> if anybody's going to be staying in that room there, it's going to be quite bright. It's nice though. So uh, yeah, I'm off to bed. I think it's time that we went to bed. We do have the one on the side as well, which looks pretty nice. Um, but yeah, it's now time that I uh, go to sleep. So uh, I'll be seeing you in the morning. Oh, morning. Ah, lovely. A nice sunny morning. And the decorations are still on the wall, which is good. They haven't fallen off. Um, Dennis is calling me over for some reason. Uh, can you go buy a tree? By a tree? Where, where from? Ah, Peter Wood. Yes. He has loads of trees. So hopefully Peter Wood will be able to provide us with one. I'm not sure if he's going to pay though. I daren't get into a conversation with him because I fear it might get a bit too much for him. He does struggle with the simplest of conversations. Yeah, if we're going to get a tree, it's going to have to be fairly big to be able to look good. But obviously not so big you can't even transport it back or put it up. So, uh, just sort of medium size of a full size tree, if that makes any sense at all. Right, hello Peter. Um, Dennis wants a tree. I can provide one. £100 a tree. You're welcome to cut one down. You can use my tractor if you want to. £100. Well, it was going to be something like that. These trees aren't exactly small. Um, I'll just give the bill to Dennis, I suppose. That'd be fun. Thank you, Peter. And he's offered to allow us to use his tractor, so that's very handy. Um, as for a trailer, though, it's going to have to go in a trailer. Probably ours. The partially painted trailer. Oh, actually, we've got the um, yeah the bale trailer just here. I could use that. Is the front loader attached to the tractor? No, it's not. Okay, so that's going to have to be put on, and we do need to get some kind of grab. A log grab. I'm not too sure if he has one here or not. 
Um, so yeah, I'm just going to get this all set up and then we can figure out the grab in a minute or two. The trickiest thing is going to be picking a tree. It's quite tough to choose a tree because you can get ones which are slightly deformed or, you know, missing a few branches here and there. It needs to look good. It's a Christmas tree. Right, okay, so we're ready to go, if I can make it around the corner. But where does he keep his log grab? I'm fairly sure that he does have one. Excuse me, chickens. Found it. It was just tucked around the corner. So what we're going to do is reverse up here, if I can do, because uh, there isn't really much space to turn around, unless I can just, I don't know, load it from the front. Well, what I'll do is I'll, I'll reverse up and see how it goes. If I do need to turn around again, then that's fine. Okay, so I'm going to put the trailer just there, because I don't really know where the best place is for it. It might be actually within the woods, um, or, yeah, sort of halfway down the road. So let's pick a tree. Then we can cut it down and take it over to Dennis's pub. So, um... Oh, no. Over here. They're quite big. It could be quite tough to find a good one. Nothing like going for a walk in a woods or in a forest to pick your own Christmas tree. I think we're going to have to just cut one down and take the top off. Uh, that would be the wise idea. So we'll go for... Uh, which one should we go for? This one here. We'll trim it in a second. So, yeah, we'll just fell it first of all. Then we'll probably cut it in half. The rest of it can stay here. Right. So, yep, yeah, we'll cut it here. Pick the top half up, unless we wanted the bottom half. Now, I don't think we really want a Christmas stump. It would be nice to have a tree shape. And, yeah, we'll take it over to Dennis, and it'll be £100. So, he's going to love it. He's going to absolutely love not only the price, but the tree as well. First things first, we'll push the stump out of the way. There we go. It's a trunk, but it's the the lower stump, <laughs> if that makes any sense. So, yep, here is the piece we actually want to have, the Christmassy part. Let's try and pull it out of the undergrowth here. There we go. Okay, no. Take two. Is that it? Yep. And, uh... Yes, it needs to be put on the trailer. It does still look quite large, so it might have to be trimmed a bit more. Um, this is the best place to do it, because it's going to make it easy to transport. So, if I just cut it, probably here, that should be a good size. And there we go. So it's a bit sparse because we have taken the top piece, but we can fill in the gaps. I'm sure it will look very good eventually. Um, as for getting it on the trailer, I have absolutely no idea. Now luckily, because this field has not been drilled yet, we can drive all over it. So what I've done is I've put the tree over the wall, and this is going to enable us to have a lot more space to be able to load up the trailer. It could still be very difficult to do this. I have actually bitten off more than I can chew here. Um, but it just has to be <laughs> on the trailer, so it can go to the pub. It doesn't need to be pretty. So we'll hope for the best. Um, I think we should probably have the heaviest end at the front. This is going to be the most professional delivery of a Christmas tree ever. You're supposed to uh, use string and, well, rope and uh, tie it up. But obviously we can't do that. And if we can't strap it, it's going to be tricky as well. But it looks like we can do. That's good. Might have to take the strap off again first though. Yep just to keep it on. Okay, so uh, if I can get it to strap roughly like that, but obviously with it on the trailer, then that'll be good enough. I like the look of this. It's looking very good. Um, so we need to make sure we have enough straps on here to make it look as uh, stable as possible. Um, that should, should be good enough. Okay, so it looks like it's going to be staying on there. 
time to deliver it to the pub. And then Dennis can decorate it. Although, it will probably end up with us decorating it. It usually does do. That is looking really stable. I can't believe I managed to get it so stable. Nice. Uh, okay then, so we need to go down the road. That's the best way to go. Although you can cut through the yard here. But the road might be a more sensible option. Like I say, you should rope the tree up to stop it from being so wide. Unfortunately, a rope is a bit too advanced for me, so we're going to have to just go without. We're going to be popping out very close to the pub here. And here we go. The delivery. Oh no, he's going to pull the Christmas lights down. Okay, let's just hope it doesn't. Good. Here you go, Dennis. One Christmas tree. Safely delivered. I recommend trimming it to make it smaller. It's huge. But it's better to deliver a bigger tree so we can trim it instead of delivering a tiny tree, which you can't exactly grow larger. Um, <laughs> nice. That's a good way of blocking the entrance for his customers. He doesn't have many customers. Okay, so uh, we'll see what he does with it. Hey, what's this? I said a tree, not a forest. Looks like a tree to me. <laughs> it's just a very bushy tree. Oh, uh, well, uh, I'm not interested. What do you mean you're not interested? You just said you're going to get a tree. I got a tree. I know it's big, but you get your money's worth. Uh, how much was it? Hundred pounds. Hundred pounds? I knew he'd take you well. Right, let's get it unstrapped and <laughs> hopefully in a few minutes time it's going to be put up. Well, probably not a few minutes time, probably like an hour's time. Um, and yes, to be fair, I will I will put some lights on it for him. Because I think he's a bit shocked by the price and somehow the size of it. It's, in, it's impressive, isn't it? You want an impressive tree. Yep, it took a while. It took, I think, over an hour. I've just given Peter his money. Dennis is actually refusing to pay for it. He has just had a bit of a tantrum, and I've had to just give the money to Peter. So whether or not we get the money back in the future, I have no idea. Um, but it's, it won't be fair on Peter to uh, not pay. So somebody's had to be growing up about it. Anyway, he did give us a few uh, free nights in the pub, so I'm not too worried about it. So we did have to... Uh, well, I had to trim the tree. Dennis was refusing to do anything. So I have trimmed it, and I've decorated it. And, well, luckily Dennis can pay for the electricity. Ah, pretty thing. Isn't that a pretty tree? So we've condensed this absolutely gigantic spruce tree to something which is... Well, it's just the top of it. It is just the top. But it still looks good. A chainsaw does not belong near it now. So pretty. Can you imagine what this is going to look like in the dark now? It's going to be so pretty. And it's probably going to start drawing a crowd. Until, of course, he comes out of the pub with his broomstick and starts hitting the customers. So yes, I'm going to go and take the uh, tractor back to Peter's farm. It's been a great help. It was still pretty tricky though. It's very narrow uh, working in that area. Uh, so that is everything I wanted to do because I have no job and I have no um, no land to work on at Christmas. It's, it is just a time of rest. So we're going to just hang around until it goes dark, which is quite a long time. It's only 20 to 8 in the morning. But I'm sure I can... Uh, Kick a few stones around at the farm. We do have all the bales that need to be picked up as well. Uh, the problem with those bales is they are still they're still wet. Um, they're going to rot, so we either just dispose of them and obviously make no money out of them, or we open them up really quickly and uh, kick them about, then use a tether and a windrower and bale them again. So I think I'll inspect them once more. But I think we're going to be, uh, yeah, spreading them out and rebaling. Ah, oh, my 135. Mustn't leave without that, although it is walking distance to our own property. Oh, I forgot to say. Yes, we had the um, assessor come over yesterday. Um, he has just inspected our property, our house, and he thinks that it's actually perfectly safe. It is just a bit of rot in the partition walls in the the house. Uh, he said that they can be demolished and rebuilt without affecting the structural integrity of the building. 
So we can just repair it. He thinks it would be like 20 or 30 thousand pounds to do. But that is so much cheaper than rebuilding the house. So we know where some of the money is going to. That's for sure. So our house is most likely going to be staying put. This one just here. I was very tempted to say to Peter, we'll buy your house. But then of course I realised that we would have to sell this first and he has loads of fields. So it's going to be super expensive. There we go. There's our trailer. Uh, yes, I'm, I'm very pleased I didn't use this trailer to transport the tree. As you can see, things are much neater here. The IBCs are stacked. The pallets I've disposed of. So yeah, it's, it's looking much better here. I need to set fire to that, actually. It's still drying off a bit. It's, it's very uh, green. It seems alright, actually. That has dried out really well. Um, I could sell these. I think that would be the best idea. It's not too heavy. Could still be mouldy on the inside. Well, we'll give it a few more days. After Christmas, we'll hopefully be able to either sell these or just rebale them. We'll see, but we'll do something with them. As for today, I'm going to go and get a cup of coffee, and then we're going to just wait until it goes dark, and then we can inspect the pub lighting. See if it draws a crowd. I'm sure it will do. To the annoyance of Dennis. Okay, that's enough waiting. I've been sweeping the sheds out all afternoon. Uh, all the sheds there which have been filled with silt from the flood. So, yeah, I think it's time to do something a bit more Christmassy and go and take a look at the local lights, courtesy of Dagwin Thistlestick, because Dennis Jenkins refuses to pay for the tree. How on earth he managed to actually put his hand in his pocket to uh, buy the lights in the first place, I have no idea. And I also don't know how he managed to give us so many free nights. Wow, that looks good. I guess he does have a heart, but he also is quite tight. So, yeah, um, that is looking, so far, very impressive. That is so magical. Ah, oh, nice. So Christmassy, especially with the 135 in front. A nice red colour. We'll turn our headlights off. That is uh, that is quite something. So we're going to be staying there again tonight. The light seems to be on in our room. I hope Dennis isn't looking through our stuff. But that is just so subtle. <laughs> I love it. Um, except for the wasted majority of the tree. which is just the top of the tree. We now move on to Felsbrunn, and just so you know exactly what's happening for the rest of the video, I do also have the final part of the Tamiya truck build, that is the Volvo FH12. Um, it's a very short video clip, but it is just to bring an end to the series. It, it's been completely built for a long time, but I just never got around to putting the video out. So, uh, yeah, it's not the greatest of videos because it's filmed in the winter time, it's raining. Uh, but it does at least show you exactly what the truck looks like now. It is finished, pretty much, with the exception of maybe the old decal. And uh, yes, the light lens did fall off as well, just before I... Well, just in the video, um, the rear light lens. So that needs to be stuck back on. Clearly not enough liquid cement used. But um, yeah, it's going to be after this. So if you don't want to watch Felsbrunn, but you do want to watch the Tamiya truck build, just skip forward. If you want to watch it all, then great. So what I'm going to do is go over to Finima 25, hopefully, and fertilise it, because it hasn't been fertilised. I don't know if it is at the right stage for fertilising, but hopefully it is. 
we actually do have the sprayer just there next to the liquid fertilizer tank, so that's very handy. The herbicide will have to be emptied first. So, um, yeah, field 25, just down here, the oat field. I think it's possibly, it needs lime. Yes, it does need to be fertilized now, so we could use either the spreader or the sprayer. Hmm. If we have something in here, we use this. Ah, oh, we do. Good. So, yes, we use the uh, spreader. If I can find my tractors. Somewhere over here. Yeah, so I've just given the horses their oats, and they're very happy. This tractor's got mucky again. I've just dropped off the trailer. It must be from the uh, oats carting, I suppose, the dirt. Need to move this, put it back over here somewhere. That should do. And yes, we'll attach to the spreader and go and fertilize field 25. It does need to be fertilized twice, I think, so this is the first application. As soon as we can afford it, I'll get a drill which can actually apply fertilizer at the same time as drilling, because that is a really good thing to do. It really increases the, uh, the speed in which we can get the crop done, managed. Once we've done this, we're going to sleep, and then we'll obviously have another update for the horses. The price of the horses will go up. Uh, they're currently at 36 or 37,000 pounds, most of them. It'll probably go to about 42, 42,000, maybe 40,000. Um, but even so, a very good figure. So, like I say, I'm going to do this really quickly. We should have more than enough fertilizer in here to do this. Quick and easy, done. Right, so yeah, like I said, we're gonna go back over to the farm and sleep. I'm very interested to see what the price of the horses will be. I think it is gonna be around 40 to 42,000. Um, yeah, so obviously this isn't gonna be very Christmassy, this part of the video. This is just continuing the Felsbrunn Let's Play. There really aren't enough mods on 19 to be able to make a Christmas video, so I had to do it on 17, because uh, there's those fantastic lights, the, the Christmas decoration lights. Um, a really nice thing to download if you want to get them. They are actually used in the editor though, you can't just place them. You have to use the uh, Giants editor, which is not too difficult once you've used it a few times, but not quite as easy as using the placeable system. The Christmas tree was placeable, um, and yeah, that is again a very good mod. So it's back into here. Uh, not into the pillar though, of course. We need to go next to the sprayer. There we go. Good. Okay. Yeah, I've realised you can't turn the lights off if you've already turned the engine off. Which is kind of annoying. But then again, I shouldn't have left the lights on in the first place. We'll feed the dog as well. Uh, right, so about 10 hours, 9 hours, something like that. We have a loan interest and property maintenance. 5 a.m. Hmm. Are we tired? Yeah, no. <laughs> That's annoying. The dog is still running about. Have some food. Tasty stuff. Don't eat it too quickly. You need to keep that for the rest of the day. Oh, have some more. Yep, so uh, let me just increase the rate of time. We'll check up on the horses. Hopefully by the time we've done this, it'll be light. They should be absolutely fine. So they have got, uh, well, the, the cheapest horses were 22,775. And the best ones are worth 40,991. Very good. Everything here is looking very good as well. The water is going to have to be topped up soon, but it's still okay for the time being. 
Um, so it is just a case now of probably working in our brand new field, which is just over there. That's bright enough, so we can now continue. Uh, what I'd like to do is very quickly take a look in the store just to see what it costs to get a diamond drill. I've done this before and I came to the conclusion it really wasn't worth it. But with the bigger field now, it might be worth it if we can uh, get a good price. Yeah, it's not cheap. It would be the price of a horse at least. Uh, but I'd be looking to get the Rapid A600S, ideally. Which requires 180 horsepower and we don't have a tractor which can cater to that. Which again is a problem. But yeah, since we have sold the majority of the horses, if not all of them, we should have plenty of money. Probably £400,000 to half a million. Um, so the money is coming very soon. It's just taking its time a bit. So what shall I do to that field? Shall I just um, pick it, pick the straw up with the loading wagon? I suppose I should do. Take the bucket off. Yeah, because I did say in the previous episode it wasn't really worth picking it up with the loading wagon because we could just basically bail it. Um, but there is, isn't really a benefit to that. Not at all. So I will just go over there, I'll pick the straw up, sell it at hopefully a good price. Let's just see what the current price is for straw. 178. So nowhere near what it's been. I think I got 250 at one point, which was just the best price ever. Um, but it's still much better than the 89, which I used to get before the economy option came in. So, yeah, very helpful. We have some straw in here already. Uh, we have plenty to go at, so let's get cracking. Let's get some straw moved and sold. By the end of it, we might have some money to buy something else. I'm not too sure what, but I'm looking to get another tractor at some point and also a drill. Right, so this is going to be the final load that I sell. The rest of it's going to stay within the loading wagon uh, for the horses. So that is pretty much there. 22 and 23,000 litres. Good. Um, so yeah, over to the sell point once again. We're getting about £4,000 for each load, which is still good. I think before we were getting about 6000 uh, which is incredible. Um, but yeah, for straw, these are good prices. So here we go, let's sell it, and I don't know 
exactly what we're going to do next because I do need to expand the field but I'm still trying to think about exactly how we're going to do it um, because I might still need the bottom area for grass. It's currently grass, there's no point plowing it just to want to reseed it again in the future um, to make it back into a grass field. So yeah, still considering the different possibilities. If there is a good job, a good contract, I might do that. But yeah, first of all, we need to finish off the straw field, and then, like I say, we can put it into the uh, in the yard, still within the loading wagon. And then, as soon as the horses require straw again, we can just give it to them. Almost finished. Just a tiny bit left to do over the far side about half a swath, it doesn't even reach down to this side of the field um, and then yeah we'll be uh, putting this into storage so it's going to be about well probably full load actually by the end of it it's quicker than baling that's for sure um, but with baling with doing the bales you can just go and store it very easily I think you can, you can get things like hay lofts and straw lofts and stuff but yeah we, we don't need to get into that We'll just keep using this if we're going to sell it, and then if we can store it just in here, that's fine. But if we do need to store loads of straw bales for cows, for example, yeah, we'd have to get a baler. Well, obviously we would have to anyway if we if we were getting a store of bales. But yes, if we need to store plenty of straw. Um, so yeah, 19,328 litres. Not too bad. What a mess. Uh, <laughs> what a mess indeed. What are we going to do with all this stuff? I just desperately need another shed. I suppose I could buy a shed. Could do. If I put it over here. It's a good place for it. So, providing it's on our property, there shouldn't be an issue. That looks good. Somewhere here. So I'll try that. It looks perfect, really. Nice. So we have some more storage, finally. Um, yeah, so we're going to put the combine in there first. We'll transfer it over. It's currently parked on a pile of wheat, which isn't ideal. And then we're going to hopefully store the different implements in the correct areas. So well, this combine's a mess, actually. It really should have been cleaned. Yeah, if we put the um, grass equipment together, the cultivating equipment together and the fertilizing sort of equipment together, um, that will keep it nicely categorized. Um, as for this one, I think I'll put it over here. The wheat is staying put for the time being. Uh, as soon as we need more wheat in the trough for the chickens, it can move. There isn't too much here anyway, so it's just temporarily being stored. As soon as we can afford a silo, I'll get one of those, but yes, that is a long way off. Uh, silos are quite expensive. Uh, in fact, what is the exact figure? Yeah, 110. That's expensive. Currently, our grass equipment is just being left outside, which is okay because it hasn't rained, but if it had rained, it wouldn't be a great place to keep it at all. Uh, the tether is in there. That needs to be transferred across. So I'll really quickly do this, and then once it's done, I'll resume the video and show you exactly what I've done. There we go. So we have the water tanker at the end. Obviously, these are all very obvious things, but we've got the fertilizer spreader then, and a load of grass equipment. We then have over here, as you've already seen, the uh, loading wagon to the right. We then have a bit of a mess in the middle here. This is what I need to clean up now. I think I might just turn this around. We'll keep the sprayer with the chemicals which are just here and then yeah that's pretty much sorted it looks messy because of the wheat which is dumped in there um, but overall it is actually pretty good and we do have much more space just part of the forklift a bit neater oh yeah I think it was running all the time For some reason, the subsoiler has moved outwards. I must have clipped it with something, I assume. So that needs to be sorted out. Sorted. It's looking neater. 
And finally we have the, well we've got two trailers actually which are just left out. Um, the flatbed, well actually neither really matter, the flatbed is a nice trailer but it, it doesn't need to be under cover as such because it doesn't uh, really carry anything which is for hygiene, like, you know it needs to be hygienic, uh, such as the grain trailer. So I'm going to just keep that there, this can go in here. neatly uh, and I think we're actually getting close to the end here just try and see yes the combine harvester needs a wash I'll just do that really quickly because that is <laughs> that is really bad I don't have a problem with too much well, with some dirt but when you have too much it just looks unkept very untidy but that is a vast improvement as soon as we can afford another shed maybe in the middle it'd be even better I suppose we should take a look and see if it needs to be serviced as well. Because that is going to affect efficiency. Now for this grimy looking thing. Much better. Very good. Um, yeah, so what we're going to do after this, I can say, is go on to the Tamiya video. The final video uh, of the truck build. There isn't a great deal to do on Felsbrunn at the moment, I'm just waiting for the crops to grow. And of course, I'm essentially, uh, or most importantly, waiting for the horses to become as, m as profitable as they can be. Like I say, they are really good. The price is very good at 40 991 but I know that we can get an extra 10000 on top of that. So hopefully in the next day or so, um, these are all going to be sold. So Trooper, is it Xerxes? Uh, Jester. Cowboy, and then these will be a few days afterwards. So yes, things are looking up. Very soon it's going to be a really profitable farm, but at the moment it's a bit of a waiting game. That's the only problem. As for the chickens, they are still producing their eggs. It's looking good, but we, we don't have enough here to sell, so there's no point in taking them. Uh, so yeah, we're going to leave it there for today. I will see you in the final part of this Christmas special, which is the Tamiya finishing off drive video. And finally, the Volvo FH12 Globetrotter, the Tamiya truck build. So I know it's been a very long time since I have shown a video of this. Uh, in fact, I think it was, was it March? Something ridiculous. Um, but yes, it is finished. You can see there is a lens missing on the rear lights. It just needs to be stuck back on. It fell off just before recording the video because um, it wasn't really stuck on very well. But otherwise, it is finished. Uh, there could be the odd decal which needs to be put on. But yeah, the actual build itself is complete. So I'm just going to provide you now with a bit of driving around, nothing in particular. Um, the next project is to get a trailer for it, which I actually do already own. But I'm not going to uh, announce what it is just yet. Um, but yes, I, I already own it, so um, it'll be coming soon. And hopefully that series doesn't take quite as long to get the final part out. Um, as you can see, it's actually pretty fast. It does have just the standard... Tamiya motor or Tamiya motor, um, which is pretty fast. So it, I know that when I was building it, there were a few recommendations to put a slower, more powerful motor in, if that makes sense. Um, so yeah, I'll probably do that with the next truck build. But first, I'm building a trailer, and then we'll probably move on to uh, another truck. And I think they might be live streams. I might live stream them instead of just doing a video because it's quite slow and painful to watch um, but if it's a live stream I can just discuss it as I go and it should be quite fun um, so I think that is going to be the best approach but obviously please do feel free to drop your opinion down below and uh, I'd love to uh, hear from you it'd be great so here you go a bit of uh, random driving about
Typically, it was raining when I did the video. Uh, it's been raining pretty much every day, so I found it really difficult to get a video out of this. Um, but yes, it, it's not too heavy, so I still managed to get it out there, even though I don't like to use it in the rain. Um, also, you, there is a clip just here, an eye clip, which you can take out and then lift up the cab to access uh, several different parts of it. So uh, yeah, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. Hopefully you've enjoyed uh, all of the Christmassy stuff at the beginning and a bit of Felsbrunn. And of course, the final update to the Tamiya FH12. So that brings it to a close. Thank you so much for watching. Have a Merry Christmas, everybody. And I'll be doing another video before New Year. So see you again soon. Bye for now.